Hello and thank you so much for joining me. My name is John Denton and welcome to this, the latest in this series of videos that I'm doing all about retouching and aspects of photography to help us through this difficult time when we're all on lockdown. I hope you're thriving and surviving wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for the feedback I've been getting on these videos and welcome to the latest one on use of the liquify tool. Now I might be over egging it a little bit when I say it's one of the most important tools in Photoshop but if you're into portraiture like me then it is because it can add a lot to the power and the quality of the image. Now I don't mean in making people into Barbie dolls that's an awful awful aspect of the fashion industry and I hate it when I see that level of perfection in inverted commas. If you could see me now, I'm doing a little thing with my fingers because perfection is overrated, it's unattainable and it creates false expectations. But there are little bits and pieces that we have a duty to do to our clients and to make their images better. And that's what I'm going to take you through to today. So here's Carrie stood in the street outside the studio. That's the ARC studio in Birmingham. Here you see the classic street scene that we're presented with, the big red sign in the hotel opposite, um, a car parked here with its tail lights showing and this piece in the background. But another time we will go through removing street furniture and how to get rid of some of these distractions. But for now, I'm interested in Carrie and how we can make her look even better than she does. And one of the big things we use for that is the liquify tool. If you've never used it, it's up here, filter, liquify, Keyboard shortcuts, Shift, Control, X, Shift, Command, X if you're using Macs. So get used to these uh, keyboard shortcuts because it can save you a lot of time and a lot of RSI. So Control, Shift, X, and that brings up the Liquify dialog. Now, as I say, it's got a lot of bad press, this filter, because people have overused it and made people look quite freaky and really slimmed down, bulged that bits out. But we're going to use it quite subtly, I hope, and I'm going to show you some tricks that will really add a lot of emphasis to your image. Now, down here on the dialogue are all the different tools um, that you can use. Probably the first time you ever picked up Photoshop, you went to the bloat tool and made somebody's eyes look bigger by clicking on there and going, woo and we can really blow them up. But for practical purposes, the only tools that I use are the freeze mask and the forward warp tool. Recently, Adobe have added in this face recognition tool that allows you to do some specific changes. And we will go into that a little bit. I do use it slightly and I'll show you how. But the main one being the forward warp tool. And to get the best out of forward warp, you need to reduce its density and pressure, which is a bit like the opacity and flow in Photoshop, down to about 20-ish on each value. Much more than that, and you're going to get a really big effect. What I prefer is little small, subtle effects, and then just build it up with increased strokes if needs be. Okay, so now we've got the forward warp tool set up, what are we going to do with it? Areas I want to look at are hair. Big hair is good hair in, in my style of portraiture. I want to make the neck a little bit longer, accentuate the length and the elegance of that neck. I might just look at the waistline a little bit to give even greater definition to a waistline, particularly here where the jacket's just hanging straight down. And that makes the waist just appear a little bit straighter than in reality it is. Um, and that's probably about it on this image. There's nothing else I want to do, but these are the three main things I'll always look at. And one of the quickest wins and the best wins you can get in female portraiture is slightly bigger hair and a longer neck. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. If we take the neck first of all, and I'm just going to make my brush, just use a square brackets, just to make that brush a little bit bigger. So it kind of fits this area of the neck here. And all I'm going to do is just press on the shoulder slightly, just drop that shoulder down a touch. Now my pen strokes are going in line with the building and in line with the neck because I don't want the side of this building to start bulging out and I don't want the neck to start getting thicker. So let's just pull that down, pull that down. Same on this side and this side I'm just going to push it in just slightly. So I'm going from right to left, just pushing that neck down slightly and just bringing that shoulder down to match one on this side, though it's not too important because you can't see it with the hair. That's looking good. I'm just going left to right to touch there now. Let's put that in. Beautiful. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go to the tool that I mentioned before, the Threes Mask Tool. 
So what I want to do is make her hair bigger, but by doing that, I don't want to make her face bigger. And what I can do is paint here using the threes mask tool and basically threes an area that I don't want to move. So I don't want her face being dragged off in all directions. And so I'm going to freeze the skin so it doesn't move, but the hair does. Really useful tool, very quick to apply. And now when I go to my forward warp tool, I can start to grab areas of the hair. Let's just make that brush just a little bit smaller. Let's pull that up there, pull that up there, pull that up there. And I'm following the contours of the hair. I don't want to lose these waves in her hair, but I do just want to make the whole thing just look that little bit bigger. Now you can copy and paste hair, you can add hair in from other areas, but this is for me the easiest way of doing it. You don't want to do it too much or else it'll look very obvious and you'll fake, but just that little extra. And I'm actually just going to squish that little bit down just so that it matches across here a little bit more. Just filling that gap a touch. It was a very, very windy day, so her hair is quite naturally quite wild. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just take that waistline, make my brush about the same size as the waistline, and just nip it in just under the bust there. Just nip in that area. Okay. That's looking good. I'm happy with that. Let's OK. That will take us back into Photoshop. It's just returning the liquify result. And if you think of the amount of calculation it's having to do, it's amazingly fast. And there we see, if I go back to my history, take a little snapshot. That was the before. That's the after. And I hope you'd agree we made quite a difference to the elegance of this neck area and the bigger hair gives a real dynamic edge to the flow and the movement. It looks a lot more fashion now than perhaps the first one, which looks a little bit more like a snapshot. Down here, I've just made a bit of a mistake in that I pulled the image up and that's just left a little bit of white down here. To fix that, I would just take the spot healing brush on content aware, just run that along that bottom edge, just like that, and that will fill in that gap and get rid of that for me. Cool. That is the essence of what I do with the Liquify tool. That's up close and personal. Let's see it now on a full length shot. Here we've got Carrie, same area, same location, just pulled back shot slightly, and I'm going to take the Liquify tool again. Control Shift X or Command Shift and X and let's go into the Liquify tool. Here we've got it. And I'm just going to take my forward warp now, just bring out that hip just slightly, bring in that waist a touch. I'm going to freeze her face. And you see basically how quick this can be. It doesn't have to be a long drawn out process. The more you get used to using it, the quicker you'll be and the better the results will be. I'm doing this very much on the fly and the more experience you get at it with all things, the better you'll become. Here, I've frozen her face now and that means I can just come in here, make that hair just fly away. We saw before the benefits of getting bigger hair here, but also just bringing the neckline in, just dropping that shoulder slightly, dropping that shoulder. Hair on the left of the frame I'm not too bothered about, it's this flyaway hair on the right that I really want to give more emphasis to. That's looking good. Let's just bring in that neckline just a touch. Okay, let's okay that. And it's returning result and when we do so we'll see again by going in the history and taking that snapshot that was our before that's our after and what a difference we've made we don't want people to look at it and go well it's nice but it's fake it's you know who is that i want people carry to look at it and go well that's me and i'm looking good and i can tell it's me and it really is me and there's nothing really fake there all i've just is done is accentuate certain elements of the image and that for me is the beauty of the liquify tool.
I mentioned before there was facial recognition now built into Liquify. And if we just go back to this um, image, the close up, and bring up the Liquify dialogue again, then we'll get, start to have a look at some of the facial recognition features. And the only one that I really use is the eyes. And quite often, um, for real emphasis, eyes could do to be a bit bigger, or somebody will have one eye smaller than the other. Now, Carrie's right eye here is usually a little bit smaller than the one on the left. And here, it's recognised as a face. And if I take this slider here for eye size, I can make the one on the left, the left of the frame, her right eye, basically smaller or bigger. Smaller, bigger, just by using that slider. And I can just even the size of those eyes up. And make the other one a little bit bigger too. That's all I'm going to do. We could experiment with eye tilts, eye distances, nose, mouth, face shape. I think this is getting too far for me. This is all starting to get a little bit weird. If I want to change the shape of the nose, I'd rather do it by dodging and burning. That's coming in a later video. But eye size is one that I use quite often because one of the skills that you can develop as a portrait photographer is reading your subject's face, looking at them intently and finding out which eye is bigger, which eye is smaller. Here, we can even that up a little bit. I'm going to OK that result. That'll take me back to the image. And if we just click on our history again, take that snapshot, that's where we started. That was the first Liquify. Now that is with our improved eye levelling. It's really subtle effects. We don't want people to look at it and go, wow, that's fake. I want them to look at it and go, wow, that is gorgeous. As they should, because it's a picture of a gorgeous girl in a not so gorgeous environment, but beautifully lit. So there ends the lesson for today. Wherever you're in the world you're watching this, I thank you for your time. Please get in contact. All the social media contacts are coming up on the next slide and feel free to drop me a line. But thank you for your time. Over and out. Love and light, folks. Stay safe.